Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about an idea called the biological species concept. So let's write down that first. Biological species concept. And this is going to be the main definition that we're going to focus on and what really makes us species. Okay, I'm going to point out a couple of key words for you in this definition. It says a population or groups of populations whose members have the potential to interbreed so they can mate with one another, interbreed, and produce viable and fertile offspring. Make sure you know what the words viable and fertile mean. Okay, viable meaning they can survive, they can live past birth and they're healthy. Fertile meaning that they themselves can also produce offspring. So that is the definition of species that we are gonna stick with. There are actually variations on that definition. But the biological species concept states that a species is a population that can interbreed and produce viable fertile offspring. Okay, also another key idea is that they would be a species in the natural environment, meaning that they can interbreed in the natural environment. So for example, a hybrid, okay, a hybrid like a liger, and if you're interested in ligers, there's some pretty cool pictures on the web. You can look them up or tigons. Okay, you might be thinking to yourself, well, if they can make a species, if they're a hybrid, why wouldn't they necessarily be considered a species under this definition? Well, here we're talking about the natural environment. So think to yourself, well, why wouldn't a tiger and a lion produce offspring in a natural environment? And I'm hoping to answer that question you're thinking about their habitat and where they might live in the world. Okay, also, since in this definition they have to produce viable and fertile offspring, fertile offspring bring the main idea on this next one. So, for example, a horse and a donkey, even though they can mate and they can produce a mule, we consider them different species because the offspring that they mate, that they, that they produce, are actually infertile. So they do not fit this true definition of what we would consider a species. Now, most species, we consider them di two different species, or most populations, we would consider them two different species when they are reproductively isolated from one another. Reproductive isolation is a key idea, meaning two populations cannot reproduce with one another. They are isolated from each other to reproduce for some particular reason. Some of the barriers to reproduction, some of the barriers to pre reproduction are classified as being prezygotic barriers, prezygotic barriers, versus some barriers to reproduction are considered to be postzygotic barriers. Okay, so my two categories here are prezygotic barriers and postzygotic barriers. Well, think about what that those two words might mean. Pre and post, hopefully you, you remember before and after. Zygotic is referring to the formation of the zygote. So if there's a barrier to reproduction that's before fertilization, doesn't even allow fertilization to occur, a zygote is never formed, then it's a pre-zygotic barrier. On the other hand, if it's a barrier to producing offspring, viable and fertile offspring, and it's post-zygotic, so something happens after the zygote forms, that prevents viable or fertile offspring, that'd be a post-zygotic barrier. Okay, let's look at our pre-zygotic barriers. There's a few different ones here. We've listed five different ones here. I'm gonna go through them really quickly. Okay, first one is gonna be habitat isolation. So if two species are living in different habitats, water and land, and not the same geographic area, it could be even as specific as, you know, on the forest floor versus up in the trees. If they live in different habitats, then they might not reproduce even if they were able to if they were in the same habitat. Okay, behavioral isolation. Behavioral isolation. Okay, we've talked before in class about different species having different mating behaviors. So if the behaviors of two species don't match and they don't recognize mating signals, then they might be reproductively isolated because of those different behaviors. Okay, the third one is called temporal isolation. Some people see, see this word and they think temperature, which is not correct. Temporal is referring to timing, time periods. So for example, 
Think of organisms that are mating at different times in the year. Okay, even include plants on that one. Think of plants that produce flowers in the spring versus the fall. The flowers, the reproductive structure. So even if they could cross-pollinate, um, if they're mating or if they're producing those structures at different times of the year, then they're not going to have the opportunity to fertilize the gametes and produce a zygote. Okay, so so far we have habitats, let's that underline that keyword, mating signals or behaviors, and then time periods. Okay, last two that are pre-zygotic. The next one is mechanical isolation. And this one says that the anatomy makes it impossible to reproduce. So the reproductive structures don't fit together. And anatomically, they the structures do not match so they cannot uh, re reproduce to, produ to produce sorry, the zygote. Okay, last one, gametic isolation. Okay, so this one is, even if they're living in the same habitat, they might have the same mating behaviors. Let's say they reproduce the same time of year, the reproductive structures fit together, but for some reason, the gametes don't fuse. Some sort of biochemical incompatibility, Something prevents the gametes from actually fusing, even if the species have all of the other things in common. Okay, the last three things that might make two species reproductively isolated, they are post-zygotic barriers. Okay, the first one is talking about, or is called, reduced hybrid viability. And I talked about that word viable earlier on. Okay, viable meaning the ability to survive. So if two populations try to produce an offspring, and yet for some reason genetic incompatibilities cause the fetus to abort, or the offspring does not survive for any sort of significant length of time, okay, if it doesn't get beyond the embryonic stage, then it's called the reduced hybrid viability meaning that they could mate, they could produce an embryo, but it didn't survive, it wasn't viable, didn't last long to produce an actual offspring. Second one is very similar, but this one is reduced hybrid fertility. Okay, we mentioned previously that fertility means that you, your, that the actual offspring can produce more offspring and keep the species going. So if two organisms can mate, Okay, the, um, they remain isolated, reproductively isolated, if the hybrid is sterile. So that was my example earlier on. With a horse and a donkey, yes, they can mate. Yes, they can produce a viable offspring. But then that offspring is infertile. It's sterile, meaning it, it itself cannot produce more offspring. So therefore, those two original species are still considered separate species. They are still considered reproductively isolated from one another. And the last one, hybrid breakdown. So looking at this definition, so let's say that two organisms had no prezygotic barriers, they were able to reproduce, and that the first generation of, for hybrids, for, of hybrids were viable and fertile, everything seems fine, but then in subsequent, which means future, in subsequent generations, Let's say that the offspring do not survive or then they're sterile in subsequent generations, then that's an example of hybrid breakdown. So those in two original populations are still considered to be reproductively isolated and two different species, okay? So this is kind of our last little expansion on the idea of what is a species, starting with the definition and how two species can actually be reproductively isolated from one another.